Aloha, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Faith and Family First podcast. I am your host, Eva Andrade, and today we're going to be talking about the economy and how do people of faith navigate this crazy economy where things are just so bad and it just seems like sometimes we don't have enough cash. So how do we trust in the Lord? You know, what are some stories in the Bible that can maybe get us through this, this troubling time? So let's chat about that. Well, everybody, we really appreciate you spending your time with me today. And as usual, it's a little, um, it's going to be a little different kind of a show because instead of having a guest, you're just kind of going to hear me ramble. But I think that I'm going to be talking about a, a subject today that I think it's a subject that everybody is feeling right now, and that's the economy. And in fact, it's really interesting because if you pull up on the, um, if, if you do a search right now on the web and you do like economic recession, you're going to see titles like Yahoo Finance that says recession forecasts have been wrong for years. Here's why a perfect indicator doesn't exist. Or the economists will say if inflation is down and recession is unlikely, what went right? Um, the Economic Times, recession coming soon? Jim Rogers says next market crash will be the worst. Or the Center for American Progress that talks about record low, not high revenues that happened when President Donald Trump was in office. Or the Business Insider, the U.S. could enter a recession if the Fed doesn't cut rates, strategists say. Or the Financial Times, the latest U.S. recession indicator just dropped, and it's a banger. So, the point is that no matter who you're getting your news from, you're going to have some um, economists that are saying, well, we're not really in a recession. You know, it may get rough for a little while, but it'll get better. And then you'll have somebody that says we're in a recession and here's how bad it is. But, you know, all of this stuff, it's just words. It's just words. If you're talking to people out there, they're going to tell you that they're feeling it. They're feeling it really, really bad. People in churches, there's a lot of people in churches that are having to make the tough decision of, you know, do I cut on my groceries this month? You know, how do I pay this bill? You know, who do I trust? You know, what do I do about that? And I think that's really what I want to talk about today because I'm one of those people and I want to, I want to share my story with you because I'm hoping that maybe somebody out there will maybe resonate with the story and, you know, maybe it'll give you some hope. But for me, I work for a nonprofit and I've been working for a nonprofit since 1994. So, you know, all of these years, I've always kind of had to stretch my budget. And as a single mom, you know, we were living in a low income housing area when my two daughters were young. And, you know, I remember at the time that I used to buy them a lot of things on my credit card because I didn't want them to feel like we didn't have enough money. And, and I remember feeling and thinking that a lot during their early life, you know, back then, you know, they had the Game Boys were really popular and um, I really wanted them to have the other kind of the toys that other kids have so they didn't stand out. And so, you know, I would go and I would put these kind of things on credit or, you know, groceries, because groceries was the one thing, you know, that people play around with because you've got to pay bills, you know, and bills are there. You have to, you know, negotiate and come up with, you know, within your internal financial system, you know, how do you pay this bill when you can't pay this bill? And so you're kind of always doing that. Now, I understand that not everybody listening is going to be having these kind of struggles because some people are just blessed with how they're able to manage their finances. And others struggle, you know, everybody's different personalities differ, right? So you have some people that are just really good at budgeting and saving and then putting money away. And you have other people that maybe would be good at saving and maybe good at budgeting. But the problem is that maybe they have a bill they've got to pay this month, or, or maybe even sometimes they'll make, you know, a, a choice that maybe isn't the best for them financially. Like maybe they'll buy that dress or get their hair done or all that kind of stuff. So 
when my daughters were little, you know, I'd be making those kind of choices. And a lot of times I would pay the bills and then use my credit card to buy groceries. And living like this for a number of years when I wasn't making a lot of money, it it ended up paying its toll and I was renting and things were just really, really rough for me. And um, ultimately, I, I ended up having to claim bankruptcy. And it was very, very difficult for me to do that because I didn't want to claim the bankruptcy where they wipe out all your debt and then, you know, you just start over. I wanted to, I wanted to do the one where I was going to reorganize and get better. And so um, I was able to keep my car. And at that time I had just bought and moved into a, a house. And so I was actually making mortgage payments. So I didn't lose my house, but you know, I did have to go through five years of unbelievable um, strain, you know, just to, to make ends meet because, you know, the way that works is you're paying the money into the bankruptcy court. And then the bankruptcy court is making payments to your debt, because I really felt like what was important to me, and maybe some of you will, will appreciate this is, you know, when you make those credit card payments, you're signing something saying, you know, I agree to pay this. And, you know, that was really sitting heavy on me that I didn't want that to just be wiped away because I felt like, you know, I knew what I was doing when I was making all those, those charges and signing and putting my name on it. And so I wanted to pay back. So I did that. And, you know, when I finally got out of bankruptcy and I was just starting to get my life together, you know, COVID hit. And then all of a sudden, you know, the economy, you know, was tough for everybody again. And, and then fast forward to today, and I cannot believe the kind of things that, you know, are just coming due. I mean, the gas prices are up. The electric bill is up. I live in a condominium, as you know, from the prior show where they raised my condominium insurance a hundred percent. So, you know, I was paying 550 a month and now I got to pay 1089. And, and I mean, all of these things. So I feel like that I just cannot get ahead in life, you know, and I think that I'm not the only one that feels that way. And, you know, but I think we need to be reminded that Philippians 419 says, and my God will supply every need of yours, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And I think that, you know, no matter how hard things get, we have to remember that Jesus himself told us in Matthew chapter six, do not worry. He said, you know, what are you going to eat? You know, what are you going to drink? What are we going to wear? You know, um, pagans run after all of these things, but we as Christians, if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all of these things are going to be added unto us. And that's kind of the hope that we have to know is that nothing we're experiencing in this economic downturn is surprising to the Lord. He's not up in heaven, you know, freaking out because things have, he's just, he's waiting patiently for us to turn to him and to ask for help. You know, other scripture stories, you know, like in Exodus 16, you know, and I, I love this this story in Exodus 16, because this is where you've got the whole Israelite community, according to the Bible that they're out in the desert, right? And they're, um, this is that desert that's between Elam and Sinai, right? And they're, they start complaining. In fact, if you look at this particular chapter, you're going to see how many times they use the word grumble, 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 they grumbled, they grumbled, they grumbled. Um, and so Moses comes down to them and he says, you know, you're grumbling, the Lord heard you and the Lord provides them mana. Right. And so they, they get this mana and it's interesting that as you know, people are receiving this mana, you know, Moses tells them, you know, just take what you need. And the Bible is pretty clear that those that took a little had enough. And those that took, you know, a lot had enough. So there was always just enough, but then there's those people that even though Moses told them, don't save it, you know, just take what you need. The Lord will provide, you know, they were so worried that they saved it. And of course, the next morning when they wake up, this mana is like has maggots and stuff in it. And so the message is clear that the Lord is going to provide exactly what you need, you know, and that's the thing we have to look, look and trust is that whatever we need, 
as long as we come to him in faith and we pour our heart before him, you know, before the throne, that the Lord is going to meet us where our need is the greatest. Right. And I just crack up because the grumbling, the grumbling never stops. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of people in the faith community that just trust the Lord and their spirit is high. And these are the ones you like to be around. They're, they're, they're this beacon of hope. You know, you're just around them and they always have the right things to say and they lift you up. And then you always have the grumblers, right? The ones that, you know, they, of course they love the Lord and they trust him, but you know, they're always unhappy about stuff, you know, and those people, they also, um, there also can be useful because sometimes, you know, the Eeyores of our life, you know, will remind us of something. We can't always live in this place of la la land, you know, where we're not facing the reality, but we also don't want to live in that place of, of you know, despair, you know, where we have no hope there, there's that happy medium. And so people, as long as they, they serve the Lord, you know, and, and they're in our life and he's put them there as friends to hold us up and lift us up. You know, these are the ones that we want to surround ourselves with, because these are the ones that's going to point us toward the cross. And that's really what we need to happen. You know, another message of hope in the Bible is when Jesus feeds the 5,000, it's, you know, People in, and this is Matthew um, 14, 13 through 21. So you've got people that Jesus had just heard the news about John the Baptist, that he'd been beheaded. And so the Bible says that Jesus wants to go off and he wants to spend some time, you know, he's probably grieving, you know, but the people seek him out. So they want to go see him. And then the evening approaches and, and people are hungry. And so the disciples come to him and they go, you know, we should probably, you know, send them home. And, and Jesus says, do, do, no, don't send them home, you know, feed them. And they're like, well, we don't have enough food. And miraculously, suddenly um, the five loaves of bread and the two fish become enough to feed, you know, um, the people that were there. And again, it's a reminder that when we come to the foot of the cross, that's exactly what we're going to find. We're going to find the nourishment. We're going to find the things we need, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm I'm also very mindful of the fact that miracles come in so many different ways. You know, sometimes that miracle pops and, and wow, you know, it's, you don't, you don't suffer that much because the Lord hears you and he drops the miracle right into your lap, you know, but other times we have to wait and we have to go through that process. And in that process, we're being built and we're being reconstructed into the models of Christianity that Jesus really wants us to to show because it's those models that are going to are going to attract people it's those models that want people want to come and serve the Lord i mean that's exactly what we need to be striving for is to be that beacon of hope and um no matter how tough things get and things will get tough you know um there, everyone's feeling it right now everyone i talk to say they're seeing it um they're going to the grocery store and they're, they're just, the, the prices are unbelievable, right? So you, you figure normal families with young kids, they're having to pay childcare, they're having to put food on the table, clothes, um, school just started, they had to buy school supplies. You know, there's so much need out there, right? Then you have our elderly families that are um, sometimes going without food that maybe they've got high medical bills, um, they're trying to balance their fixed income in an economy where their income is the same, but the costs are going higher. And that is an unbelievable stress on our elderly population. But even, even if you're single, you know, and, and you're just trying to buy groceries and pay your bills, you know, everybody is struggling and everybody is at the point where they're having to budget and I love the idea of creating a budget, you know, um, I, I know that in the early days of my bankruptcy, you know, I, I had to sit down and I had to look at exactly what money was coming in and what money was going out. And to be honest, there were things going out, um, in my expenditures that, you know, were fluff. And so you immediately cut the fluff, but what happens when you're looking at your budget and that's, what's happening with a lot of people today, at least this is what I'm hearing is there's not a lot of fluff you know, they're, they're cutting out, you know, the, the little things that are out there that maybe aren't that necessary in their life. And they're still struggling. You know, there's a lot of great 
Christian financial um, planners out there that you can go see and they can help you work through your, your, you know, whatever your situation is. And I think that that's always a step, but I know sometimes people are afraid to reach out to these financial planners because they cost money, you know? So, you know, if you're one of those people and you're listening and you really want to do something and you don't know what to do, send me an email at eva at hawaiifamilyforum.org. And, and I'll see if we can plug you in into some of the, um, the attorneys that we know that do financial planning, especially because as you're getting on in age, you want to make sure that your financial plan also takes care of your estate, you know, or what um, attorney Scott McQuilkani says, your stuff, you know, you want to make sure that your stuff is taken care of and not just your stuff, you know, um, the other thing that we want to make sure is that, you know, your end of life planning, as far as your advanced directives are also in order, you know, so planning is this whole myriad of things, right? You've got your immediate and then you've got your future. And that's the thing that we want everybody to be aware of. So of course it's important, right? All this stuff we're talking about, it's stressful, but, but we have hope. We have hope in Christ Jesus. And really that is the message, you know? So what are some ways, right? That we can trust God during these economic times, right? Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to trust God's provision. As I mentioned, you know, God has provided, God has promised to provide for his kids, no matter the economic situation, no matter the politics, no matter who's the president, no matter, you know, who's elected governor or, you know, whether there is, um, things that are happening in your life that you didn't plan for, you know, God is still God. He's still on the throne. A good example is first Kings chapter 17 verses four through six, you know, God feeds Elijah with food delivered by a raven, right? And in verse 16, he made sure that a widow's cruise of oil never ran out and that her flower bin was always full. So that's an example of trusting in God's provision. The other thing we can do, we can shift our focus. If we're focusing only on the negative, we are going to be totally stressed. We're going to be filled with anxiety. And um, as someone who suffers with anxiety, I know how important it is to not focus on the bad, you know, the bad that can happen. Because if you do that, what happens is it just piles up, it just piles up and suddenly you feel trapped. And when people feel trapped, there's a lot of negative that can happen from someone feeling trapped, including um, making the choice to end your life because you feel like there's no answer. And one of the tools that my doctor taught me during my anxiety, um, whenever I would have my anxiety attacks is, is to, you know, keep asking yourself these questions, right? Okay. What's the worst that could happen? Okay. Well, you know, if I can't pay my bills, the worst that can happen is I'll get notices. Well, what's the worst that could happen if you get these notices? Well, if I get these notices, then I'll have to um, either come up with the money or I'll have to make financial arrangements, yada, yada. You see what I'm doing? So you just kind of keep going down with these things until you get to the very end. And then you'll find out at the very end that really you're not trapped. There really is an answer, right? So the Bible encourages us to focus on the, the eternal instead of the temporary. And a scripture verse that talks about that is 2 Corinthians 4, 18. We, this is where um, we're told to focus on what is unseen and not what is seen, right? So we see what's in front of us. We see the budget in front of us. We know that the money is not enough. Um, But if we focus on the cross and our faith in Christ Jesus and the provisions that we get from the kingdom of God, when we're in desperate, desperate need, then that's what's going to, you know, give us hope because bills and income and all this stuff, it's, they fluctuate, right? They're temporary, but our relationship with God is that's eternal. That never, never ends. And of course, the important thing to do is pray, you know, we got to stay in prayer. And, you know, I do find that when I'm the most stressed, or when I'm at the point where I'm really freaked out over what bill I'm going to pay and how I'm going to do this and, and adjust, you know, if I just take time to silence myself and to come into that quiet place where we're, where we're sitting at the foot of the cross and just having that conversation with Jesus, 
you know, even if there's not an immediate answer, there is still that peace that begins to surround me. And I know that you can find that same peace by just sitting at the feet of Jesus and pouring out your heart and letting him know what you feel and what you think, because he knows anyway, you know, you're just, you're just being open and honest to what's happening. You know, another thing that's positive is you can spend time with other believers. You know, if, if you're spending time with people of faith, kind of what I said earlier, what you're going to find is they're going to build you up and you really want to be around people that are going to say and do the right things. You really are who you hang around with. You know, if you're hanging around with people that do drugs all the time and they don't want to work, um, ultimately that's going to pull you down, right? So if you're sitting around with other Christians who are uplifting and who, you know, will give you what you need and, and provide you with advice and guidance, you know, I, I know, you know, a lot of people are saying, yeah, but look, look at what happened with Job, right? So Job surrounds himself with these people that were like condemning him and all that, but Job did the right thing because he kept plugging in back into God. You know, he kept taking his stress to the Lord and, and Job himself went through moments where he was having a hard time, but he stayed faithful. And at the end of Job, everything that was taken from him was restored by the Lord. Right. So we have to know that even in the loss, you know, we will gain if we're plugging in to our faith and if we're plugging into our community. Um, and you know what? This is also a reminder that sometimes we need to ask the hardest thing that I had going for me during the whole, my whole situation of bankruptcy was there were times I just, I needed help. And I struggled against that so much because I didn't want people to know, you know, I didn't want to share what was happening because I felt like people were going to, you know, condemn me. I mean, even other Christians, I was worried they were going to, you know, quote scripture at me and tell me I wasn't trusting God and all that. And through all that situation, as tough as it was, I really didn't lose any faith in God. I lost a lot of faith in myself though. Right. I mean, because then I'm thinking, you know, I should have known better, you know, I should be better at this and you know, there was a lot of attack against myself, but we have to remember that a lot of times when we're going through rough times, again, taking our focus off ourselves and putting it on the Lord, then, you know, the Lord can, can get in there through the power of the Holy spirit and give us some wisdom and some guidance and even sending the right people to give us guidance. And so sometimes you just have to ask, Hey, I can't afford groceries this month. You know, um, can you help me? I, I've had friends that have stepped up, you know, throughout my life, you know, that have helped, that have unbelievably blessed me when I just didn't expect it. And so I know that God can do that for you too. And sometimes I got help when I didn't even really know that I needed it, you know? And then of course, when the help comes and then I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was like such the perfect time for that help to come into my life. And, you know, for those that are listening that have, that have helped me in the past. See, I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> um, you know, for those that have helped me in the past, you know who you are and you've been a huge, huge, huge blessing to me. Um, and so if you need help, people ask your friends, ask your family. Um, sometimes you maybe even go to your pastor, you know, your pastors can't help everybody who asks at the time, but you know, if you're really desperate and there's nothing left and you really have nowhere to go, if you talk to your pastor, your pastor might be able to plug you in to a service or other people that may be able to bless you. So sometimes you just have to ask. The other thing we can do during this time is to serve others. I know that one of the things that, that I do that makes me feel better is I help other ministries. Um, if I know that other ministries need help, I can't provide time. A lot of times I definitely can't provide the money, but I will find out what they need. And if there's a need that I can provide for them, I will totally help them because I feel like by serving others, again, it takes the focus off yourself. And you're also sewing, you know, you're sewing your ministry into the community and that can never, 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 never be a bad thing. Anytime that you're taking your faith and you're putting it into the community. And we talk about this. I know we've talked about it ad nauseum, you know, with the elections and stuff. But if we take our faith into the community and we're doing all these great things, 
going to start to see change. We absolutely have to, because the Lord cannot not grow. He just cannot. He, he is, God is a, he is a creator. Everything he does is, is that verb of creation, right? That's what he does. So anytime we bring the Lord into things have to be created, positive things have to be created. And that's what we need to believe, right? Is that just that step forward, you know, in faith is going to have a positive outlook. Is it easy? Of course not. Of course not. Oh my gosh. If anybody's out there saying it's easy, then maybe they've had it easy, but not everybody does. You know, it's just, it's taking those steps to make us stronger. It's like little kids when they're learning how to walk, right? They're, they're horrible at it in the beginning. You know, they're shaky, but because they're with their parents, faith and trust in them and, and, you know, being over them and making sure that they're safe when they're taking those first steps, that's how we grow. And, and that's what we got to do. And of course, we can't not tell you to read the Bible. I mean, you got to spend time in the word, man. Absolutely have to spend time in the word. You know, if you're struggling, you don't know how to do that. And it's interesting. I know that our listeners and viewers probably do know this, but if there's somebody listening that just doesn't know how to start, there's a great video series called Give Him 15. And if you just look it up, 15 minutes a day, and um, it's a great way to walk through the process of, you know, looking at scripture and all that. So, you know, if you need somewhere to do, go, go and do that and, and look that up. All right. So, you know, as we're ending, let's, let's do a little encouraging words, right? Because no matter how negative things are, we want to make sure that we end on a positive word. So let's, let's do this. Let's focus again on scripture because that's, how we can just trust God in everything that's happening. Right. So let's, let's, let's talk about how scriptures can really make a difference in our life. Right. Psalm 46, one, God is our refuge and our strength. And he's ever present in our time of need. That's what we need to focus on. That's what we need to believe. That's what we need to hold on to. God is our refuge. He's a place we go to when we just need to be protected from all the battering that we're getting in life. He is our strength. When we feel like we cannot take another step, when we feel like we're too weak, when we feel like there's no hope out there, God is our strength and he's ever present in our time of need, which means he doesn't go anywhere. When we are struggling and we are hurting the most, God is right there standing next to us, holding us up, whispering in our ear, just providing us the love, strength, the encouragement, sending the right people around us. That's where we go to. That's what we hold on to. That's what we need when money is just not enough. Because when money's not enough, he is. He is sufficient. He is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the one that will come when everyone else is turning their back on us. When, when there is no hope, he is the hope. And so I pray for God's provision and peace and guidance on everyone listening and watching. And I pray that God will help our future because he knows the future. He knows his plans for us. He, he is not leaving us to a place of destruction, but he's leading us to a place of hope. And that's what I pray for you as you were listening today. So I really appreciate that you spent time with us today. You could have been anywhere else, but you decided to listen. And I appreciate that so very much. I put, you know, if you have a story to share, type it below. I'd love to see the comments um, from those of you that have maybe had a time of struggle and you trusted the Lord and put in the miracle there. Because I think if you're sharing your story, then what's going to happen is that everybody's going to be um, blessed. Everybody's going to be blessed. And so please share that below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button. So, you know, every time we upload a new video and we will see you next week where I'm going to share a presentation that I did in the community that I think will bless you. So thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week. Mahalo, everybody.